Previously on the bill. Minute on the lips, lifetime on the hips, girl. But they toast so good. Mm -hmm. and you're out there on the streets with nothing between you and God only knows what. And what thanks you get at the end of the day. You enjoy working here, then. I love it. <laughs> Up. We're doing our job, Stevie. That wasn't part of my job. It wasn't our fault. Let go of it. Hey, it's no answer to everything. Don't get involved. Don't feel anything. What the hell has that got to do with it? And I'd like you to remember who you're talking to. He could die and it could be our fault. Stevie. Stevie! Stevie. Stevie. Hang on a minute. Scuff? Never mind. Didn't know you were on the phone. Grace, Will, Arm Robbery, Carswell Street. Here's Scuff. Lovell's jewellers, one man with a handgun, some punter decided to tackle him. Amazingly, he didn't get his head blown off. He's in St. Hughes now with concussion. Lunatic. No, no, no. Press prefer, um, have a go hero. OK, thanks very much. Could have had an armed robbery. Oh, yeah? Since when my partner with you? Well, we've worked a case before, and next logical steps to buddy up. You don't know what you're missing. I'll live. Sally? Roger's inside. He needed a bit of calming down. Yeah, I'll bet. Thank you. All right, these officers will look after you now, Mr. Lovell. Mr. Lovell? DC Darcy from Sun Hill. This is DC Fletcher. Oh, I know you've already been through this with our colleague, PC Valentine. But would you mind telling us what happened? There was a customer in there, a young bloke, who wanted to look at crucifixes. And this other man burst in, waving a gun in my face, told me to empty the trays into his bag. It was awful. And he ran out of room. He told the customer to hand over his rucksack. And he said no. And then he made a grab for the gun. The customer tried to set the gun off him. And they started fighting, and then there was this terrible clunk against this poor man's head, and he was out, just lying there. The robber filled the rucksack and ran out. Can you describe him? He wore his hood up. Northern accent, maybe Manchester. It's broad across his shoulders, quite stocky. Thank you, sir. We're going to need your CCTV, if that's right. It's out the back. <clears throat> Try not to touch anything, either. At least until our forensic people have been here and checked the fingerprints. No, no, I won't. My hands are still shaking. You tell that young man, foolhardy or not, this crucifix is a present from me. You don't get heroics like that these days. We will do, sir. Adrian Butler? Yeah? DC Darcy from Sun Hill. This is DC Fletcher. Hi. So we understand you tried to intervene in a robbery at Lovell's Droolers. Try to, yeah. Not the smartest thing to do when someone's holding a gun at you. Yeah, I know. I, I just didn't want him to have my bag. What was in it was so important? My girlfriend sent me a present from Spain. I'd just been to get it from the post office with my passport for ID, so I've lost that too. Still hardly worth risking your life over. I was only in there looking at crucifixes. I was going to send one out to her, say thank you. Suddenly someone starts waving a gun in my face. Well, I'm sure there's some people out there that have put you up for a bravery award, but well, what you did was a big risk. Can you give us a description? He had a hood on. His face was covered. What you don't remember, his accent, his build? Taller than me. London accent. I don't know. When you feel up to it, we'll need to take a statement. All right. I'm sorry. <sighs> it's been a really bad day. It's all right, mate. Just don't do it again, yeah? Well, he didn't give the same description of the robber as Lovell. Well, maybe he just blanked it out. He's too calm. If Lovell hadn't been able to remember, I wouldn't think twice. But this guy, I'm not sure. We didn't tell him about the crucifix. Listen, I'm more concerned that if we catch our robber and their descriptions don't match up, our case could fall apart. All right, well, you talk to him about the robbery and I'll talk to him about the crucifix. Where's he gone? 
Well, Rob was wearing gloves, so we can't expect to find any prints in the shop. We can't get a good enough grab of his face to run through the facial recognition system. Right, well, obviously, our friendly neighborhood pawnbrokers are going to be worth keeping tabs on for any new holes. Nice. Okay, the VW Golf that he used to escape the scene was stolen from outside a garage on Trenton Way this morning. We traced it through traffic cameras from outside the jewelers two miles across town. As you can see, his face is still obscured. He turns off the main road here, and we haven't been able to pick him up coming out the other side. What's next? Well, it's hardly a groundbreaking piece of detective work, but, well, he's a big guy and he uses a sports bag to do the robbery, so we're working on the assumption that he's into keeping fit. Okay. Now, the last time we saw him was on Alvis Road. There's two gyms and one boxing club nearby, Walkite Road, Floyd Street and Collar Street. Now, he's either heading to one of them or he just lives around the corner. OK, well, good. It's a start. Also, all units are searching the area for the car. You said you had doubts about Mr Butler. You reckon he's in on it? No, not like that, Gov. The CCTV doesn't back that up, but there was something about his interview. The description he gave of the robber doesn't match what we've seen. Also, he disappeared from the ward two minutes after we'd spoken to him. I know him from somewhere. Did you run him through Crimin? Oh, I was just about to, but I thought we should focus on the robbery. Absolutely, but if he sparked your interest. Right, Max and Stevie, see if you can get any prints lifted from the displays he was touching and chase identification ASAP. Get Mr Lovells, anything left should be our guy. No moves on the robber without informing me first. You find him, I'll feed him to CO19. Looks like it's been abandoned. I don't think we're in any danger. Sierra Oscar from Sierra Oscar 2-1. Go ahead, Sierra Oscar 2-1. Suspect's vehicle registration, Victor 437 Delta Hotel Mike, found abandoned on the corner of Lenman Road. Please request Socco at the scene. Gov is PC Valentine. We found the car. It's empty. There's jewellery trays all over the place. OK, Roger. Uh, secure the area. Thanks. Gov, I've got the thrilling brings back from the jewellers. Our have a go hero is Justin Reed. Shouldn't be too surprised he did a runner from the hospital. He's been on our wanted list for four years. What do we want him for? Murder, Gov. Do you want a burglary? He thought he'd skip the country. Well, he's back now. Justin Reed's been on the run for four years. Him and his pal, Barry Usher, were accused of murdering this lady, Diane Anderson, in what looked like a burglary that got out of hand. Reed escaped, or she was caught soon afterwards. What was the cause of death? She died of head injuries. Usher claimed it was Reed that beat her with a jemmy. Is there any evidence to back that up? Well, there was no forensics on Usher to prove otherwise. It's believed that Reed ended up in South America. He'd already spent six months in Brazil after his A-levels. And he came back here with some bad habits. A delayed check at Gibraltar three weeks after he disappeared showed a fake UK passport bearing Reed's photograph, which had been used to leave the port, so he clearly knew how to evade capture. Barry Usher served four years of an eight-year stretch for aggravated burglary, and he was released from prison just last week. Stevie, where you got? Yeah, well, I put two and two together on Justin Byner crucifix this morning, and it turns out that his father, Henry Reed, was a C of E prison chaplain at Hayes End. He resigned about a month after Justin went on the run. He's been quite ill recently and he's moved in with his daughter. OK. Will you and Max get over there, see if they've heard anything? Whatever was in this bag, Justin Reed risked his life to keep hold of, and this guy knows where it is. Let's get going. Yeah, OK, I'll just go on. Thank you. Bye. Right, I've got the IDs come through on the two guys that have got form from Walcote Road, Jim. Neither of them match the description of the armed robber. Right, the male members from the gym on Cola Street check out. What do you want to do? Do you want to widen the search to other fitness clubs in the area? Good deal. We could just be wasting our time here. We might just live nearby. Hang on. I've got a good match for the description. And he's got form for shoplifting and possession. Andrew Wesley, a.k.a. Wes. Now, he entered the boxing club on Floyd Street at around 10.40, roughly an hour after the robbery. With a rucksack and a gym bag. Sally, find out what time he left and find out what address he gave the boxing club. I'm going to tell the D.I. he's going to want CO19 on this one. This is our man. Well, 
Got Andrew Wesley's home address where the boxing club says he's still there. Gov? Yeah, I heard. Thanks, Sally. One on Floyd Street. OK, it's a boxing club on Floyd Street. Let's go. Andrew Wesley, D.I. Manson, D.C. Fletcher, Sun Hill. Is this your bag? Yeah. Clean. Where's the rest of the stuff, Andrew? Rest of what? You know what I'm talking about. I'm gonna foggy us, mate. Well, let's have a look in your locker, shall we? Come on. On your feet, let's go. Thank you. My girlfriend, if she loved me. What do you reckon? Take him in. Come on. Let's go. Obviously, there's no CCTV in the changing room, and we ran through the tape they had of the corridor, and that's the only other exit. Basically, all he does, he goes from here to the shower room, back to the gym. We've got people down there now, searching everywhere he set foot in, but as yet, the other bag's still in thin air. No jewellery, no gun. What about the ring you found in his jeans pocket? Well, he claims he bought it at the market on Antrim Street, and he's got a receipt for it, such as it is. But there's no CCTV on Antrim Street, so we've only got his word for it. Uniform are getting a statement from the guy who supposedly sold him the ring, and if that pans out for him, unless we find that rucksack, everything we've got is circumstantial. We've no prints, no positive ID, and the ring isn't traceable to Mr Lovell's jewellery shop, so... Wesley could walk. Maybe someone in the changing room carried the bag out for him. Well, it's not backed up by the CCTV. It's a big rucksack, and no one we've seen is carrying a bag big enough to conceal this one. Well, what if he was tipped off? Well, someone's helping him out, aren't they? But none of the current members are showing up on Crimin, so we're going to have to expand the search. Anyone with the slightest connection to Wesley, all right? Gov. Look, I know it's a bit tenuous, but... What you got? Well, the cleaner. She lives in the same block as him on the Larkmead estate. Her name's Alenka Dubcheka. She's got no form on crimin, and she's working legally, but... All right, well, let's check her out. I take it Wesley's still keeping his big mouth shut? Yes, Gov. Let's hope he's not as smart as he thinks he is, because we've got less than 24 hours before we have to release him, OK? What's she got there? Taking out the rubbish. And the manager said she hadn't left the building since this morning. Yeah, it's right. She took her lunch in the boxing club. You're kidding me. Check up. Sign your CID. I've got reason to believe you've got stolen goods in that bag. Do you mind if I take a look, please? For what? Obviously, my brain is still out to lunch, but will someone please help me? How does he make a rucksack simply disappear, eh? We've now got witness statements from the men in the locker room when he came in. Neither of them saw a second bag or a locker that was open that he could have stashed a bag in. He's only been assigned one locker, and his only connection with anyone in there is that he lives in the same building as the cleaner. Oh, yeah, who we now have to apologise to for accusing of assisting an offender. Yes, Gov. Come on, people. Don't let this smug git walk for lack of concrete evidence. Gov? What? The footage is a bit dodgy, but you should take a look at this. Now, you see this bit underneath the trolley is empty. The light changes. Wesley approaches. I thought it was the shadow on the trolley as he passed it, but when Wesley's gone through the door, the shadow stays. I think there's something in the bottom of the trolley. Gov? There's another camera angle. There's a linker on the trolley. All right, Kezia, get down to the lot, Mead. Bring her in. You two down to the boxing club. OK, thank you. We'll let you know if we need you. It's heavy. Smug now, is he? 
And what's this? Ah, Justin Reed's false passport. Way to speak to Justin Reed's sister Rebecca. Good. Well, apparently Grace and Will have struck gold at the boxing club. Oh, right. Well, it's like bad trips to Liberty. Yeah, keep me posted. Yeah. Let's have a look. There you go. And one fake passport, Adrian Butler. Looks good, too. Yeah, well, it would. That's context for you, isn't it? That's interesting. You guys free? Yes, go. Can you do a ticket trace for me, please, on this guy, Adrian Butler. Date of birth, 17th of April, 1986. Start with Gatwick, Heathrow. Flight's out today and tomorrow. I got it. Thanks. Go. Right. Good work, all of you. Thanks, Adrian. Come on. Hang on a minute. Come on. Leave you to it. Do you recognise this jewellery? No. No? OK. For the tape, I'm showing Mr Wesley Exhibit WF1. A black rucksack. Not mine. No, it's not. We have CCTV footage of you taking this bag at gunpoint from a man in Lovell's Jewellers and stuffing it with jewellery. We also have CCTV footage of you hiding this bag on a cleaning trolley at the boxing club an hour later, which is where we found it. We haven't even got into ID parades or forensics yet. I don't think this is going away, Andrew. I'm pretty sure we've got enough evidence to charge you with armed robbery and assault, and to charge Elenka Dubcheka with handling stolen goods. No. No, leave her out of it. Why? Because she's your girlfriend? Yeah. I mean, no, she, she doesn't know anything. Right. So she didn't know she was going to get an engagement ring out of this robbery after she'd hidden the bag for you? No. She didn't know. Well, we're hardly going to let her off the charges on your say-so. This is armed robbery, Andrew. Where's the gun? It wasn't a real gun. I binned it. What am I going to do? Shoot people? I think I went down there a month ago looking to treat herself for her birthday and that bloke wouldn't even be nice to her. Said everything was too pricey. Waiting for her to rob him just because she's foreign. So I was going to have a little word. Knock a few manners into him. And she said she didn't want it. She'd save up and go somewhere decent. Well, that jumped up little git had a scare coming to him, didn't he? All he cared about was the money. So I reckon I'd take it all. See how he felt. And Alenka could have whatever she wanted. I guess I messed it up, didn't I? It's a nice bike. Hello, I'm Diaz Carter. This is DC Moss from Sun Hill. We're looking for a Rebecca Reed. That's me. You need to ask about your brother. What about him? Can we come in? Years. Has he tried to contact you at all? No. He knows there's no point. Is this because Barry Ash has been released? Not that we know of. Your brother showed up on CCTV at a local jeweller's shop this morning. It was being robbed. Oh, God. Oh, not by him. Purely by coincidence. He was in there buying a crucifix. Now, we know that your father was a prison chaplain. Is there any possibility he could have been buying it for him? My father's very unlikely to be accepting gifts from him. It's certainly not a crucifix. We were hoping to speak to your father. See He's resting. At the moment. He's got leukaemia. Oh, huh. sorry to hear that. I moved him in with me because it's easier to get him to the hospital. But he has blood transfusions three times a week. I would know if he'd had any contact with Justin. We understand that there was some animosity before the burglary. Now, you don't think Justin might be back for some sort of revenge? Dad asked him to leave because he was out of control. There's no reason that Justin might want to hurt your father? I handed his passport into the police. I mean, that might have been it. Ah, D.S. Carter, sir. This is D.C. Moss. Nice to meet you. You handed his passport in, but he still managed to skip the country. 
There's only so much I could do. Dad, you shouldn't be on your feet. Ah, I feel fine. We are sorry to trouble you, sir. So my uh, son has shown up then? Yes, he has. Obviously, you wanted to find out if he's made contact because there are outstanding charges against him. Well, he wouldn't come here. This is your property, Miss Reid? Yes. We sold the family home after Justin disappeared. I moved in here and Dad got his own place. Justin wouldn't know about it. I visit twice a week to check on it. It's empty. I was there yesterday. We still need to see for ourselves, okay? Right. Barry Usher. Never heard of him. Out a week and already lying to a police officer. All right, what? Justin Reed. Tell me he's dead. I'll buy you a beer. Have you had any contact with Justin Reed since leaving prison? You'd know if I had. He'd be in hospital. Scrote left me eye and dry. I did four years for him. You did four years because you burgled an old lady's house. Considering she ended up dead, you're lucky you're not doing life, so don't come all in this sort of me. Whatever. I'm out now. We done. Am I still here? Then we're not done. I've got nothing to do with him. Well, he's back from wherever he's been. And if you want to stay out of trouble, you'll let someone know if he tries to contact you. Like I said, you wouldn't dare. No one wants him round, not his family, not his mates. You clean now, are you, Barry? Yeah, I got clean. Why, well, still using, is he? No idea. Because that boy could use. Go back a long way? He used to invite me round. I was his dad's pity case. Why? I was in a home. He'd come in and talk about God. Went right off his perch when his missus died. Rules getting balled out. Justin started hating him. Did they sort it out? Nah. Once Justin started getting heavy with the drugs, things kicked off big time. And Justin got booted out in the end. I was a bit of a bad influence. I reckon if Justin's back, it's probably because he wants to pop one on the old boy for old time's sake. What am I, your snout? It's a nice bike. Yes, been in and out of the city. What have you got out of her? Off the record? I don't think so. What do you do in the city? Legal secretary. I've got a job on hold when I look after Dad. It's a bit risky, isn't it, in this climate? I don't have a choice. Luckily, I've been there 12 months. Excuse me, Miss Reid. We'd prefer it if you'd wait down here. Right, what do you think of it, Anna? Yeah, I like her, you know, looking after her dad and all that. Okay, how about in terms of the investigation? Oh, right, well, her body language doesn't contradict what she's saying. She's a caring, intelligent, professional woman, and that profile doesn't usually fit somebody who casually lied to the police. So, yeah, I believe her. She doesn't know where her brother is. Yes, dear Sculpture, I might get a little bit chatty, but I can still do my job. We heard about Reed's bag. Yep. Looks like he didn't want anyone to get hold of his fake passport. That explains why Justin risked his neck during the robbery. Wesley was walking out with his entire life. Also explains why he gave a dodgy description of Wesley when they interviewed him. Yeah, there was also camera and uh, this. Rebecca Reed. Didn't she say she's only been in that job a year? So he didn't take this with him four years ago, did he? Of her contact, Stephen. While you were busy checking out her body language, she was lying through her teeth. Yeah, all right, Max. Bring her in. Goff. House keys, a phone number. She knows exactly where Justin Reed is, because she's been hiding him. benefit of the tape, I'm now showing Miss Reed Exhibit WF2. A counterfeit passport bearing the name Adrian Butler, but clearly showing a photograph of Miss Reed's brother, Justin. Exhibit WF3 is a bundle of used banknotes totaling £2,500. 
I'm now showing Miss Reed a financial report of transactions in her name over the last two weeks. Excuse me, can you do that? Showing that she has withdrawn various amounts totalling £3,100 during this time. Exhibit WF4 is a set of house keys which we have matched with her father's address in Rathbone Lane. And Exhibit WF5 is a business card. Miss Reed's business card. Is that your handwriting on the back? Yes. All of these items were recovered from a bag that was in your brother's possession. Do you want to tell us how he came to have them? I only gave him my card. Why did you lie to us? Because I hoped he would go away. But brother, he was tearing us apart as a family for months before it happened. And then he's on the news, wanted for murder. I disowned him. He just wasn't someone I wanted to know anymore. And suddenly he's outside my house. I hadn't seen him in four years. I didn't know what to do. You gave him your business card? I did not want him back in our lives, but he said he wanted to see Dad. He knew he was ill. How did he know? He said a friend told him. He knew where I lived. I mean, maybe he'd been back long enough to follow me home. So you're saying that this money... That's his money. I have mine. It's in a cupboard at home. I took it out in cash to pay for a wheelchair for Dad, a, a motorised. Can you prove it? I'm supposed to pick it up today. Ring him. Okay. Okay. So what did you say to Justin? I told him he should hand himself in. He said he changed. He meant he was clean now, I suppose. I just got so angry with him. Why did you give him your number? So that he'd stay away from my dad. But he said he wanted to know how he was, so I said he could ring me if it meant that he'd disappear. And I know that sounds cruel to my dad, but I knew he'd just be so worried about Justin taking the risk to be here. So how did he get hold of your father's keys? Rebecca, do you think your father's had contact with Justin? My father's a good man. We know he is. If he's seen him or helped him, then it's only because he always believed that Justin was influenced by Barry Usher. He was heartbroken just hearing that he was involved in a burglary, but... Poor lady dying. I didn't think he'd ever get over it. Did Justin say anything else? That he hadn't hurt that lady. He said that I must know that he couldn't do it. And do you believe him, Rebecca? I don't know. I feel awful not being able to defend him like my dad has, but I, I barely knew him. We need to confirm your story, Miss Reed. Interview terminated. 14.47. We've got to get her down in. I think you're being too hard on her. Well, you were wrong about us. I'd rather work with the facts. Her uh, dad's just been on. Apparently he's very keen to speak to you two. We were just about to bring him in. How so? Rebecca makes contact with her brother, but she says the money's not from her or the keys. She just wants him gone. She never mentioned being in contact with her brother before. No, Gov. So why are we believing the story now? Well, I don't think she's got any. Not Gov. To... Not just yet. And I'm wondering about Henry Reed too. We need surveillance on his house, Gov. The keys matched, so Justin's probably been there and he might need to go back in. The hard way. What's the address? 56 Rathbone Lane. Okay. I'll get an elbow set up. My daughter has done nothing wrong. Rebecca's admitted having contact with Justin. She lied to us, Mr. Reed. Now, we have a bag that was in your son's possession, and in that bag were keys to your house, a substantial amount of money, a fake passport. Did I give him the keys? And I gave him money. When? So you're in regular contact with him? He comes to the ward. We've had to be a little clandestine. I always insist that Rebecca should use those hours when I'm having my transfusions to get on with her life. She leaves the hospital. And Justin knows the times. He'll sit in the corridor, sometimes next to me if the ward's busy. How long have you been back in contact with Justin? A few weeks. And you say Rebecca doesn't know? <laughs> of course she doesn't. I've been wondering how a young man, 20-year-old kid, a drug addict and the run for his life, how he managed to get hold of a fake passport. I worked in prisons. I saw what they did to people. 
Young man, you should never have been there. You know, I had to protect him. You got him the passport? I had contacts who helped me, yes. Your son was wanted for aggravated burglary and a possible murder charge. He deserved to be in prison. Well, I sent him away instead. After I got him off the drugs, he went cold turkey for me. Do you know how long it would take him to be back on that stuff inside? Look, I, I admit uh, he went off the rails, but he did not, and I repeat, he did not attack that poor woman. He still has to stand trial. What time did you see him today? About half past ten. After your colleagues had taken him to the A&E. He said he was going to come and see me anyway to say goodbye. And then he told me what happened. And that he wouldn't be going anywhere. Unless I could help him one last time. Help him how? Excuse me. Well, I could only tell him to lay low at my house. There was a little more money there. I mean, not enough to uh, get him out of the country, but uh, he could live on it until I worked something out. Mr. Reed is just in still at your house. I doubt it very much. Can you help us find him? Or, or at least tell us why he risked everything to come back? I'm the only father he's got. We could do Rebecca for obstruction, if you prefer. It's up to you. The man who made Justin's passport, he was at Hayes End when I was chaplain. I mean, he's out now. I said he might still know someone in the business. Look, he's done his time. If he helps you find Justin, you're quits with him. Did you hear me on that? With respect, Mr. Reed. Your daughter failed to report contact with Justin, then lied to police officers. You've broken the law yourself. You're really not in any position to bargain. Ronnie Slade. He runs a market stall up at Greenhill now. I told Justin that he might be able to help him, you know, for me. Uh, are you going to let my daughter go? Well... You said that she was just being loyal to you and you were trying to protect her, so if everything else checks out, then yes. Thank you. What? You get this pally with everyone, do you? No, I find I get better results from talking to people. Do you think? Yeah, I think. And why not? I'm trying to make friends, clouding the issue. No, I'm just trying to make a connection. And isn't it better to talk to people than try and weasel it out of them? Oh, by comparing motorbikes. My style. Sierra 11 from Sierra Supplies. Sierra 11, come in over. We're at Henry Reed's house on Rathbone Lane. We've got a possible sighting. Right, wait for us to get there. We're on our way. Here we are. Sarge. I thought I saw a curtain move in the front downstairs window. Will didn't. But I thought I'd let you know, just in case. Right. We'll try not to let him go this time, will you? Sarge? Right, that's got to be him. You have to go around the back. Sierra Oscar 5. Suspect escaped on foot heading east towards Merchant Road. Officers are also in pursuit of assistance required. I'll go this way! Did you see a man come down here? No, I see him. Where'd he go? I did a link all the way round. Nothing. Damn it. 
There was four of you, Max. Yeah. Well, Reed must have figured out an escape route first, Gov. I mean, he's, he's been on the run four years. He's got to stay on his toes, hasn't he? Yeah, he had things very well planned before he crossed paths with Wesley at the Jewellers. Adrian Butler was due to fly out of Gatwick this afternoon at 14.20, destination Malaga. He missed the flight, for obvious reasons. Excuse me, Gov. Uh, Stevie, the guy you were looking for, the ex-con. Ronnie Slade. You found him? We checked Greenhill Market and we spoke to a couple of people afterwards who confirmed it. He's been dead for two years. OK, thanks, Sam. If Henry Reed yanks my chain one more time... Maybe you didn't know, Max. Stevie, save it. He sent us looking for a dead guy so his son could get further away. Get down there and caution him for wasting police time. I don't care how bad it looks for us. I want the truth out of him. I'll talk to him. <clears throat> Mr Reed! Can we come in? Come in. Yeah, Mr. Reed, I'll get straight to the point. You lied to us. Ronnie Slade's been dead two years. Are you alright? Get up! <laughs> Sierra good. Oscar from Sierra 11. Ambulance urgently required. 28 Railton Close. Male, late 50s. Possible heart attack. <laughs> Help us on his way, Mr. Reed. <laughs> I'm so sorry, Rebecca. What are you even doing here? He's told you everything. Can't you just leave him alone? We need to ask your father. Look, your father didn't tell us everything. He sent us to interview a dead man. And your brother was at your father's house about an hour ago. He had the place under surveillance, but he managed to get away. All he's doing is making it worse for himself. What do you expect me to do? Look at what this has done to my dad. Rebecca. Just leave us alone. And you wonder why people don't come to you for help. Well, Justin hasn't come to us for help. But if evidence comes to light to suggest he had nothing to do with the murder of Diane Anderson, we'll investigate it. But he has to come in first. Yes, yeah, so you can put him through the system. Rebecca, if your father tells you the whereabouts of Justin, you need to let us know. Great, so we're back to square one. He's telling her he's not going to tell her to help Justin. He wouldn't put her in that position. Maybe he wouldn't have to. Pretty soon her brother could be the only family she's got left. What's she going to do then? You're wrong. Well, I guess we'll find out. So, we're pretty certain Justin Reed is still local, right? Mm -hmm. What do we think his next move is, Max? Thanks, Gov. I think Justin Reed's got one chance. All his cash went with the passport and the door keys. He shafted, except for one thing. His sister's taken out three grand. Now, if he comes begging, what's she gonna do? Buy her dad a wheelchair he may never use? Or help her brother? Stevie? Well, I've been wrong about Rebecca once today, but... She's devoted to her dad. I just don't think she's got the same relationship with Justin. Well, I think it would be naive of us not to put an obo on her, so hopefully one of you is right. Let's get going. She's probably getting a bag together for her dad. That can't be easy, sitting at his bedside, can it? Mind you, the poor old bloke's probably sedated most of the time, but, you know, you'd want to be there, wouldn't you? No, I would. Right, okay, so you're either cross with me or you're just ignoring me. Don't you ever just want to sit and think about something? That's what I was just doing then, you see. Sitting here thinking, because I don't feel the need to talk about everything. Every little thought that appears in my brain. Some of them can just stay there. Oh, here she comes. She's on her way out. My money's on that bag being stuck with three grand in cash and not her old man's pajamas.
This is the only time I hate motorbikes when I'm supposed to be following one through traffic. So she's just going straight to the hospital? That isn't over yet. So it's not a personal thing then? What? No, I don't annoy you. Well, you can say it if I do, I don't mind. Well, you just can it! You talk too much, Stevie, you talk too damn much. It's not a popularity contest, and all trying to win best stuff copper in CID. Yeah, that's a good job, because she'd definitely come last. Some of us are just trying to get a job done. She's clocked us. I think you might be right. What gun? She had to go a bit too fast. I'll keep a safe distance. Slow down, Rebecca. What's she doing? She's trying to get away. Maintain this distance, and hopefully, she'll come to her senses. Sierra Oscar from Sierra 1-1. One, one. Pull up here. Go, ahead, go around. Try and cut him off. Request urgent assistance from the city yard in pursuit of suspect on motorbike. All received. Tower Bridge, thank you. Sierra 1-1 one, one from Sierra Oscar Ibo. Pedestrian sighting. Motorbike driving recklessly heading towards Waste Ground by Tower Bridge. Over. Received in pursuit. You can end this now. You haven't done anything wrong. I don't have a choice. Becky, come on, let's go. What are you doing? You gotta get me out of here. Look, Justin swears he didn't kill Diane Anderson. He's got proof. I believe him. Proof? Then show me. Now, on my terms, I'll come in when I'm ready. Justin, it doesn't work like that. Look, you have to come in with me now, and then I can help you. I promise. Becky, for God's sake, let's go. Justin, look, I give you my word. If you don't come with me now, then you'll give him no choice. I'll have to arrest you. Justin. But what about your dad? Hasn't he suffered enough? Stand back! Becky, quick! Stay exactly where you are! Stay there! Justin Reed! Quick! Justin Reed! Becca, no! I'm arresting you as a special! I need to convince them! Convince them? You won't have to convince them, you need to arrest them! Chopper out. Sierra Oscar from Sierra on one. Oh, Suspect has just narrowly avoided a pedestrian with a push chair. She's mounted the pavement. Request air support unit. Come on, we can get it. Sarge, I'm trying my best. Come on! Open her up. Right, 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 right. Sarge, we have got to call this off and we'll make it a do. Damn! Sierra Oscar from Sierra Oscar 1 1. Pursuit of Bandit due to unacceptable risk. Suspects headed northbound down Boston Lane. Right? Yeah, you okay? You alright? Look up. Okay, sit down here. You alright, mate? Yeah. yeah. I was getting somewhere before you came in. I'll try a little counselling session first, Dickie. You were there to arrest him. You weren't there, Sergeant. You don't know. You all right? Sierra, yeah, yeah, you all right? Sierra, one, one. Just... Rebecca, don't touch him. Don't move him. No. Ambulance required at Boston Lane. No. Mailing to the night. Did you see what happened? Yeah. Right, it's right. Rebecca, just let me listen to Stephen Green. It's going to be fine. Just stay calm, OK? Justin, can you hear me? Yeah, he's breathing, but only just. He's unconscious at the moment. He's on the stretcher. Possible uh, broken back or broken neck. They've got him in the neck brace. They're putting him onto the uh, ambulance as we speak. Yeah, OK, go. Right, see you soon. The guy wants us back. Stevie. What? Got to go. What the hell have we done? Next 
time on The Bill. If this young man dies, I can't guarantee that either of them will keep their job. He was turning himself in when you turned up to arrest him. Had you fooled like he'd fooled his family? You're Stevie CO. Look out for him. Yes, Guff. I should have let him go. If you really want to see me pull rank, just keep talking. <laughs> <laughs>